There's an excellent possibility of electrocution. Well, you got the mic. Yes, I know. I do have the microphone. I think it goes for a couple of laughs. Oh, light him up. Light him up. Light him up. Light him up. I just, I think I'm going to go up to the cabana now, if you don't mind. Um, Just exactly how long were you in the pool? Well, what time did you start taping? <laughs> well, I was, I was here for the rehearsal in the afternoon. Just to make sure I got You've it right. You've been back there the entire time. You know, I was wondering, actually, to reach, to reach one name status, which, by the way, you're rapidly approaching. Oh, you think so? Uh, people call you Dave. <laughs> Dave, you doing Dave, young Dave this week, you know? <laughs> Streisand tickets! <laughs> Holy! <laughs> There's Streisand tickets! Let's go! What the hell? <laughs> Welcome to day 12 of Michael Keaton Month, where I'll be reviewing all the movies that Michael Keaton has appeared in. Today, we talk about One Good Cop. This movie was released on the 3rd of May, 1991. The tagline was... How far will one man go to be a good father and stay one good cop? <laughs> Very cheesy, um, but uh, it, it fits kind of the tone of the movie. Uh, we open up, Michael Keaton plays a cop called Artie Lewis. His, uh, his partner, Stevie DeRoma, played by Anthony uh, LaPaglia. Uh, he's got his partner, you know, and they're very much in sync with each other. They've been partners for like eight years. And they go and do this job and Stevie gets killed. So Artie, Artie has just lost and Stevie was already a single parent and his wife had passed away. He had three young daughters and so for the time being, you know, the three daughters stay with Artie and his girlfriend, uh, Rita Lewis, played by uh, Rene Russo, who was pretty good in the movie. I, I quite liked her in the film. And so they got to kind of deal with the kids and they got to deal with, you know, what you know Artie is doing as a cop and his, his life as a cop. Um, and, you know, eventually, you know, Throughout the movie, they kind of think maybe they should, you know, adopt the the the, the girls and, and 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 keep them. You know, they're not quite sure at first. I think no way. You know, I can't do that. You know, my, you know, place is too small. You know, I've got this. You know, I'm, I'm a cop. I got all this stuff I need to do. They're not sure. Well, he's not sure. You know, uh, Rita really wants to to keep the girls. They become quite attached to them. But you know, and obviously they know them from before. There's a there's already a, a relationship there. But you know, it's just a very tough situation for everyone involved. Uh, and this is, you know, obviously there's like this drug, this uh, drug kingpin storyline going on at the same time. This is a guy called Benjamino, played by Tony Planner, who, uh, you know, he's just like a, just a typical kind of drug kingpin in a cop movie, I guess you could say. This is really a typical cop movie. And he has kind of a, a woman with him called Grace, played by Rachel uh, Ticketine. And, uh, yeah, uh, the movie is basically about Keaton trying to, you know, uh, juggled the, the, the three girls and everything that's going on in, in his work life. And uh, again, not to spoil anything, again, if you haven't seen this movie, um, I don't know, I don't know if I would even recommend anyone to go out and watch this movie, it's not brilliant, you know, it's not it's not even great. Um, <laughs> uh, but, you know, if you are not if you don't mind to be spoiled, then uh, you can carry on listening and watching. Um, basically, uh, it turns out that uh, Rachel Ticketine's character, Grace, she is an undercover cop. Uh, I think she's a narcotics agent or something like that. We find out near, near the end of the film. And what happens is, you know, uh, Artie realizes that he wants to keep the girls. So he needs to get a house to, to kind of you know, live with, but he hasn't got the money for it. So he decides, you know what, fuck it. <laughs> he takes some guns and he goes and he robs the the king, the drug kingpin, uh, Benjamino, and he just, just robs his money, basically. And that's where Grace gets involved. And, you know, he was masked while he did it, so she's not sure it's him, but she thinks it was him. And um, that all leads to kind of, you know, big kind of typical kind of 90s slash 80s uh, cop thriller finale with lots of guns and uh, uh, bullets flying, blood spraying, and uh, yeah, it was really good. I enjoyed it, you know, it was one of those guilty pleasure movies that I enjoyed. The thing I liked about this movie the most was the fight scenes. There's some really good fight scenes. It's proper, like, you know, hard hitting punches and just like, you know, just some good choreography and stuff and just the inventive stuff like that. And you could tell that Keaton did a lot of it himself because it was very, it was done very kind of, which you hardly ever see these days, which is something I really don't like, is that in fight scenes these days, it's very like, you know, uh, close up, you know, and the camera cuts and it's like, whoa, whoa, and you just see like fists flying, not quite sure where they're going, you know, and then it's over, you know. The, 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 the thing that is kind of evolved these days where people feel like they need to shoot action scenes with 
zoomed in and shaking and you're not quite sure. It's, I hate that, I hate that. And this was just like, camera there, just do the fight scene, you know, work on the choreography and do it in one shot and then we'll cut somewhere else and you know, we'll see the actors or at least the stuntmen doing their job. And that was uh, what I enjoyed the most about the movie, just the fight scenes I thought were really cool. Um, I thought that uh, Rachel Ticketing was good, I liked that character, it was Grace and uh, the little spark that her and uh, Keaton had, obviously he was already with someone but you know there was a, a fun kind of relationship there I think towards the end. Overall, not a great movie but one I really enjoyed so you should definitely check out if you're a Keaton fan, otherwise yeah not so much you know, definitely not one of his uh, stronger films but what can I say, I'm still amazed that I haven't found a film yet that I thought that really wasn't great you know. Well, I guess I could say this wasn't great, but I, I really enjoyed it, you know, it's thing it's difference between saying that's great and saying you know, I think it's great, you know. I didn't think this was great, but I really enjoyed it, so yeah, <laughs> that's all I can say about One Good Cop. Um, there's not much to it, but I really enjoyed it. I've said that far, far too many times now. Thank you for watching and join me tomorrow for a very special um, video. I'm really looking forward to hearing people's thoughts on it. A uh, very um, personal video actually tomorrow. So thank you for watching this one, I'll see you then. You're messing with the cart rights now, son. show where I was ridiculed because I got off to a slow start and I know you'd never do that to me I know you'd support me because you understand the sport right sure and you're back it's me. a long season it's a long Doesn't season make any difference and you we're, get off to a we're, slow start. we're playing great they're yeah. playing great they're, yeah. they're good are you good with kids are you a I good am. teacher you have to be very patient I'm very patient and um, we have a good team these guys are good they try hard and they're good I'm being careful not to hurt anyone yeah. everyone's feelings but it's fun <laughs> good. I do I love it I love doing it it's a lot of fun All right. I'm gonna have a cocktail yeah help yourself I do.